So Ian, it's your movie. Um, tell us, uh, tell us, or hit us with that intro, buddy. Have you ever thought that women shouldn't get pregnant, but men should instead? Well, watch this movie and be horrified by everything. We are here on Around the Weird, Mr. Nothing's uh, show, where we talk about movies once a month, uh, Around the Weird in film. Uh, and we are talking about a spooky movie, so to speak, that is Possession 1981. Um who is directed by a Polish director whose name I have forgotten and want to banish out of my mind forever. Andrzej Zulawski. <laughs> Thank you. I, I regret that you reminded me. <laughs> but, uh, this is a, uh, as the kids say, weird, wet, and wild movie. Uh, emphasis on the wet, weird, and wild in that order. Um, or weird, wet, and wild in that order. Um, it's sort of inexplicable, <laughs> it is, but it, it seems heavily thematic, and I think the the themes are pretty easy to uh, recognize. Um, it's just sort of like what the f what the f what the mm, what is going on here? <laughs> what is this acting, camera movement, direction? cinematography everything what well, is no, everything? the cinematography and the blocking especially are amazing something that i'll probably mention a couple times especially in the early cafe einstein scene is there's these characters that come at like uh like a 90 de degree angle at each other um mm. they're not they're they're like they're not directly uh you know talking to one another they're they're coming in at like an angle Mm -hmm. Which you could say you could you could say anything about that I think um, as an artistic direction, but uh, more so than that, um, another thing that this remind or this movie like it's really hard to um, you know talk about like parallels to anything. Uh, the insanity of it uh, is is interesting because Sam Neill was also in Event Horizon, which was mm -hmm. a horror movie that was just utterly bizarre. And then um, an another movie that was made around the same time uh, had uh, James Wood and Woods in it. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's called Videodrome. Uh, I've heard of it. I haven't seen it. Uh, I'd, I'd recommend watching it at least once. It's um, it's really bizarre and kind of um, body horror centric, which is what's going on here. Um, and I'm... Um, like I've I've never really had an opportunity to talk about Videodrome, so here's the only other time that I can think of a movie that's even remotely similar to it. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, certainly this movie is about a failing relationship that is crumbling rapidly, um, sort of on the surface level of things, and especially in the first hour of the movie. Uh, and once you hit that hour mark, or maybe shortly before, things derail and continue to derail from the de original derailment uh, again and again. <laughs> um, there's all sorts of themes of body horror for uh, for women's bodies, for birth, <laughs> birthing uh, children, uh, and you know, these kinds of things. And there seems to be an element of, um, uh, cold war, com cold war commentary, uh, particularly about Berlin and the Berlin wall, uh, because we see that wall quite a bit, uh, even a part of the wall that says the wall, uh, and, and we have a very bizarre, effeminate German, <laughs> guy who <laughs> I don't know what's going yeah I, I, I didn't understand everybody. why the setting was the setting I, I, I can kind of you know like offer like hypotheses why uh, Zulawski um, chose that but it's um, it's very it's a very interesting choice I was not um, expecting this uh, and the character of Mark, the movie never really says it out loud. You kind of have to like really examine it and consider um, like, like, like 
and and also I looked it up as well. But like Mark is a spy for some reason. Uh, yeah. and for some reason. It, yeah, it, Mark is a spy, and he interacts with his handlers a little bit in the movie. But I don't think m- much of that. I think is happening in his head. Um, I agree. Every time they meet, the camera moves in a very weird way. Yes. Uh, well, but, uh, I love the cinematography here. It's it, like it, it's very disorienting. It's very strange. Um, I, mm. I, but I, I do appreciate that the 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 strange or the the, the different feeling sort of way of they film this film this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess we should probably get started on. Um, trying to make sense of the movie. Um, Mark, who's played by Sam Neill, Mm -hmm. is coming back from an unexplained mission, it seems, or coming back home. He hasn't been home in a long time. We don't know why, Uh, but it does seem he is a spy. Uh, And the first person he sees is his wife, who is asking for a divorce immediately. Uh, we come to find out that she has been cheating on him with a uh, the set, said aforementioned uh, aforementioned uh, effeminate world loving German weirdo. <laughs> he is he's my favorite character in the movie. Personally. Heinrich, I, yeah, uh, Heinrich, Heinrich. Heinrich. That's yeah. what I thought. I was going to say, I thought it was Heinrich. Uh, Heinrich lives with his elderly mother <laughs> for, for reasons unexplained. It's, it's so, it's so weird. And like, there's a line of dialogue that is, um, that is even weirder. Like Sam Neill just asked Heinrich, like, do you, do you have sex with my wife while your mom, while your mother is yeah. <laughs> Heinrich's like, of course. <laughs> it's um it, it, like this dude considers himself a bit of a um a lover man but he's he's not i think um the the reality is that um uh that anna uh the wife um is so mentally far gone that she'll take anybody who isn't um as abusive as mark um, so at least yeah, we, psychologically we, in a few instances, physically. Yeah, certainly. He, yeah, Mark is not uh, such a nice guy. Uh, he, uh, when he comes home and he sees that his wife is not interested in him anymore and is acting very strangely, um, doesn't seem to be taking very good uh, care of their son, Bob. She's often uh, she's here and there and she's at the house. She's left the house. She appears at random hours, random times, uh, which is due to the editing of the movie, which is pretty interesting. It's never clear how much time has passed between scenes. Like you, you can tell something had to happen between these moments, but there's so many times where the scene will just cut to the next thing, like the next moment of action that is relevant to telling the story or, you know, there's no, there's no like moment to think and process what you've seen ever in this movie. Not really, unless it's a longer scene uh, because it's just like something has happened, cut right to the next thing. (laughs) Uh, But we, we see this kind of thing. There's a lot of very mysterious things um, and you're led to believe that it, it, a lot of it has to do with Heinrich and, and her love affair with this guy, uh, who Mark confronts at his house, which is when he asks, do you sleep with your, my wife when, uh, when <laughs> your, your mother is at home? Yes, of course. During this time early on, there's a, w- was Mark drink drinking? Uh, like if I remember right, uh, the house gets destroyed a lot and then cleaned. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I think one thing that happens is he's going through the divorce, um, and then like he's like lying in bed, um, like he's going through a bender, uh, of yeah. some sort. 
but and then he's just fine and he like he he gets out and he is yeah. like how long has it been and the, the the person tells him it's been like three weeks yeah yeah he he go he hears this bad news he confronts his wife at a local cafe or cafe something cafe einstein cafe einstein yeah and they don't sit at the same table they sit facing away from each other kind of that 90 degree angle thing you were talking about uh and he gets really angry and a little bit you know he's upset to his credit she is not answering anything she's not giving him anything so this is actually my favorite scene in the movie um because uh, again like they're they're they meet up they're they're not looking each other in the eye uh they're they're that he's asking like why are you leaving me and it's getting increasingly desperate finally he says like uh like she says to him like if, if i uh like if i had met heinrich before i met you i would have never had bob with you um mm -hmm. highlighting how a lot of the problem seems to stem from motherhood um mm -hmm which we'll, we can talk about later as well. Uh, and then, like, uh, Mark gets so violently angry that he's like, get out of here. And he, he chases yeah. after her, but then he's tackled by a bunch, a bunch of um, chefs, which I think is very hilarious. Yeah. Uh, they dogpile on him, for sure. Yeah. He's, he's smashing their chairs and, and destroying their tables and shoving everything out of the way. Like, he is chasing this woman down. <laughs> he is definitely uh, predatory in this moment uh and a little bit later um and and maybe a, another thing like right after this is when he has his somehow three-week bender uh anna has not been around really i guess she's probably during that time popping and popping in and out but after he gets dogpiled he's he's waking up on a bed in during this three-week bender and then when he sort of wakes up and becomes conscien conscious conscious from that uh he returns home and bob has just been by himself and <laughs> has made a big mess uh, of himself getting i think jam or something on him uh, mm -hmm. on himself and and yeah making a mess of the place tries to clean up after him and uh this kind of thing uh i think anna also returns at that point uh like later another cut happens and then she returns at night and gets naked in bed with him and then leaves yeah. for Heinrich and Heinrich makes the call in the morning come come she's at my house you'll never get her uh, or something like that but the thing is we don't know how much of that is like actually happening because Heinrich later says like I this is the first time we talked and Mark's like did you call me last night and he's like no I didn't so yeah, and Anna's not even there and hasn't been there for a long time <laughs> right right yeah yeah uh, we, we find out where she where she's going um a little bit later uh yeah. but there's another scene that happens um after mark confronts heinrich it gets his gets beaten up by heinrich yes um and then um like there's another scene back at the house where um mark is yelling at anna yet again and she's operating a meat cutter which i could already sense something very bad was going to happen with this scene um before but... that happens yeah something bad's gonna happen before that happens he uh mark takes bob to school i think yeah he well he he takes her uh, him to school and um he he meet where he meets helen the teacher and what's interesting is that helen is also played by isabel um a johnny uh, who mm -hmm. is a French actress. Um, also, uh, one she's like an actress of high esteem, um, winning a lot of awards in the 70s and 80s. Uh, wow. I feel like that's important to note. And you especially mm -hmm. see her wonderful acting in this movie. Yeah, but, um, She's playing a dual role here, which again, I think has something to do with like the idealized mother versus the actual, like what here's what happens when you force somebody into this role. Yeah, 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 and I, I, something that needs to be mentioned that we have not mentioned yet. Uh, you said wonderful acting. Uh, you kind of have to have a taste for it uh, in this movie because there is so much overacting, which is deliberate. It's very clearly deliberate because nothing makes sense in this movie. Like 
character motivations are weird actions are weird the editing is weird the blocking the the camera is weird everything moves so strange and people uh, talk pretty strange mark the way he talks to people is <laughs> sometimes i'm not sure where he's coming from like is he uh is he still being a spy maybe like collecting information like i don't think he ever is but it's just the way he talks to people is very weird especially heinrich uh or his wife uh he he doesn't really seem to love her in my opinion <laughs> he seems to be manipulating her in, in my my thoughts uh particularly because like I think I meant to say this earlier when she says, like, if I would have met Heinrich first, I wouldn't have had Bob with you. Like, one of the things that I think probably bothers her, certainly there's this dark side and violent side, which is boiling under the surface or brimming under the surface for him at all times, basically. Um, but he's also, because of the nature of his work, I think he's also just absent. Like, he seems to be an absent father uh, and and lover. And that bothers, that that makes her very unhappy uh, and explains what happens later in the movie very much. Uh, but uh, yeah, Helen definitely is a doppelganger and she, she has blonde hair instead of dark hair and she has green eyes instead of blue eyes and she's much more domestic and, and um, loving, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, in quotation marks. Uh, but then, yes, uh, the the electric knife. I was one. I've never seen one of those in <laughs> before. I was thinking when she was using it to cut the meat, like, isn't it just faster to use a knife? And anyway, please explain. Yeah. Um I think uh, if uh, like the it certainly requires less energy to use that the electric knife um, or the meat cutter. Um, but yeah, they they get into another fight, and then uh, <laughs> like she like like Anna sticks the um, the electric knife on her neck, cutting mm -hmm. herself a little bit, um, and she's she starts bleeding, and Mark takes care of her. But then he also starts cutting his sort of shirt on his arm and he mm. begins bleeding and i think um anna's like it does it hurt and he's like yeah yeah it does um so i don't know just getting at the insanity of their their relationship and how these people yeah. should not be together <laughs> no definitely not i think the interesting thing is like again oh was this the part or was it a little no 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 that was later um like there are huge communication issues uh between them certainly uh and at this point uh anna like she doesn't they're not like having a huge they're arguing i guess but they're not like looking at each other at this moment when they're arguing and it's not like she does it to like uh i'm gonna kill myself i can't take this anymore she's like doing her own thing and mark is not looking at her at the time and she just decides to do to use the knife on herself uh and then mark notices because she screams or something makes moves or makes noise and then she's left the room uh, he's bandaged her neck up and then he came back to the room right and then he did on his arm and when he was doing that i was thinking i was very confused this is my favorite scene of the movie because it's just so why is he using the knife on himself? I thought he was doing it to check to see, like, will this actually hurt me? Or, like, can does this thing actually work? Is she just being crazy or something like that? Uh, but, of course, he actually does cut himself, which, again, is sort of inexplicable, other than mm. sort of mental derangement of this toxic relationship where neither party likes the other but mark seems to be possessive and really wants her to be there for bob uh but doesn't want to be there himself <laughs> yeah, yeah well he he does reject uh joining the job again he he does want to actually keep with 
Anna, it seems. Uh, I guess we did forget to say that. But his handlers have a very weird way of talking to him, like, uh, especially the bald one with the, the sort of puffy half afro thing um, that has the pink socks on later. He he has a weird way of, of, of talking to uh, Mark like he just absolutely doesn't respect or believe what Mark is saying, which makes me think like to your point about, we can't really trust that this is any of this is happening. Um, I don't know. This kind of thing made me think that this is also part of Mark's <laughs> dilemma until later. I don't know. I was very confused by this movie myself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, well, like the these two people who aren't the most mentally stable, like find each other and um, like it it leads to I, I think there's like um, the title um, you, you said Mark was possessive. So possession, like I mm. thought, oh, well, maybe we might get a movie about ghosts, but um, I no. thought it was that I definitely thought it was that. <laughs> uh, but it's a uh, it's possession in the sense that. Like you gotta have somebody um, mm. uh, more so than anything else. Um, y these people are are not are not well. Um, but um, Mark eventually. Uh, so this leads to another very interesting, bizarre scene. Just when I thought the movie couldn't get any more bizarre, um, and Mark hires a private detective uh, to find Anna, and then um, a, a gay private detective, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it was really a weird, which really becomes weird important. Um, but uh, the, the, the 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 detective isn't doing a, a great job because they're like literally right behind anna yeah which is they making, are the worst which is making anna even more anxious and terrified um yeah so he, he follows her to this um this sort of rundown building which i don't think anyone should actually be living in and um i don't know if anybody did we uh not really because at least that apartment that anna hid in which again w if nobody has seen, if you're watching this and haven't seen it, he's literally like three feet behind her at all times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not subtle at all. Uh, but yeah, he, he uh, eventually makes an excuse to come in to check the windows because there's been reports and complaints about um, falling debris or something. Mm -hmm. And so he's coming in to check the windows uh, to see what she's up to and who she's with. Um yep yep this is when the movie really takes a uh tries to turn and falls off the train rails completely uh because he's going around he's checking the windows tapping them because that's what people who check windows do just this one's good this one won't fall this one won't fall and then he needs to check another well he wants to check another room to make sure there you know there's nobody hiding some lover or something when he comes in she is trying to tell him leave 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 you don't need to do this please leave go away leave and she is petrified because she obviously has felt his presence if not seen him uh behind her for the past who knows how long um all day perhaps uh, since the subway at least he eventually goes into a room which she told him doesn't have a window you don't need to go in there uh, let me just make sure uh and can you please describe what is in this room uh, i that you gave me the hard task there uh so what's in there is a tentacle creature that is i i the movie never really shows you what it is and in the in the early credits i kind of knew it was coming because it said the creature design by uh, mm. xyz and i was like okay well there's gonna be a creature here um and so just like a big old bloody meaty mess um, is the best I can describe it. And whether it represents like Mark's sort of possessive nature always kind of hanging around Anna or a representation of Anna's frustration with being a mother and and other responsibilities in this this 
in this um decaying world this um this mm. uh like this uh, this very depressing world um it's just there and like like the detective's like ah oh, this is scary and anna shows up behind him and stabs him in the neck with a bottle and kills him yeah she stabs him and well she hits him in the back of the head right mm -hmm. uh, with the bottle after offering him wine to get him out uh he doesn't take that and he thinks that's really weird like no no i don't need that goes in sees this fetal blob of squid octopus parts um <laughs> existing and he's like ah ah and she comes from behind to wax him breaks the bottom of the bottle and he's kind of out of it and uh what, what's going on she stabs him and then yeah just guts him uh basically um so now we have a pretty clear idea of not a full idea we, we really still don't know what the heck is going on with this and it will it will continue to devolve from here uh, but we know why she's so secretive now kind of Oh, only a little bit. <laughs> this is only chapter one of, of the madness, so to speak. Um, right. But I think I think there's another thing going on, uh, not just the fr anger from the the possessive nature and the absence of Mark uh, or her frustration with this world that's falling apart. Uh, but I th I, if it, is it the next scene? Or maybe it's at least another scene that comes up a little bit later where she sees Mark at his house that she has left. And uh, she explains an incident in a subway, which is sort of the most famous scene from the movie, uh, where she starts losing her mind and having a nervous breakdown. Uh, and when she finally falls to the ground, um, she is just screaming. Uh, she's been like rolling on the wall and and beating her chest and and just flinging herself left and right and forward and backward and on the floor and this and that uh and then she starts screaming she's crying uh slobbers coming out you know snot whatever uh blood seems to be coming out of her ears and a green ooze is coming out from down below those holes down there uh, i must what? have missed that uh, well, I did not, um, because this scene seemed to be, my thought was that th there's, there's a line, I forget what exactly what it said, but when you see the, when you see the, um, squid thing a little bit later, um, when they have truly lost their minds even further, uh, she talks about this squid thing, um, and how it's like a child in a in a newborn world or something like that. Uh, and I think that basically the point of that scene in the in the where she's rolling around screaming, losing her mind, throwing her milk on herself and smashing herself with her groceries. Uh, I think she had a miscarriage and it broke her like mentally and emotionally uh physically i guess as well yeah she it, it 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 broke her definitely and mark wasn't there to comfort her she was by herself with bob who is a child will not understand the emotional trauma of that or losing a child within and so i think that that monster was a sort of representation of that you uh not uterus oh my god that fetus that was inside of her uh this monstrous thing uh this which causes her guilt and shame and horror and and possessiveness as well um to an extent because she kills anybody who finds out about it right she doesn't want anyone to know uh or you know do anything about it uh so there's that <laughs> uh i and think that's, the, that's that's a good that's a good explanation a good um good idea or a uh, good explanation there yeah heinrich visits anna at her place uh which ends up being a bad idea 
<laughs> uh, because Heinrich. No, did Heinrich visit? No, the... uh, what happens is the, the detective's boyfriend shows up and he yeah. also gets killed. Yeah, um, he sees his his boyfriend mm -hmm. um, and is horrified and then tries to shoot Anna, who then he seems to miss and she comes at him and just beats the hell out of him and then takes his gun and shoots him dead. Which I thought that the thing was eating them to grow. Like, I thought that was the point of, like, I, I just missed it when I was first, one, like, going through it. I, I realized later she's just killing them to protect her baby. Right? Because she's like a possessive mother as well, in this mm. sense. Not of Bob. <laughs> Bob is no, an afterthought. Bob. <laughs> Bob. He, he's the bastard child of uh, Mark. Um, I guess not a bastard, but he's a bastard anyway. Uh, definitely not born out of love. <laughs> but um, yeah, I should the, also point out that while all of this is happening, Helen is sort of moving in, or not moving in, but becoming more of a part of Bob and um, Mark's life. Um, really yes. showing how like Mark is craving like an actual like um uh, traditional woman mm -hmm. um because ver yeah. helen is very like motherly and um like she doesn't ever like speak out ag against mark yeah. uh this, and so mm -hmm. uh like mark is just like she's kind of moving in and uh, anna is just she's losing everything or like she's she's yeah. her mind is going and and she's uh, like hiding away from well. the yeah, well, Helen is, like, she comes in to check in on Bob. Oh, no, 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 not to check in on Bob, to talk to Anna, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then Bob at that time is taking a bath, and he's, like, trying to see what kind of record he can get for living, not living, uh, staying underwater. Um, and Mark is like, hey, can you help my child finish his bath? I know he's naked right now, and you're not his mother, but if you could just do that for me, that would be great. And she's like, yes, of course, anything you like. Very domestic of her, very uh, fitting of the traditional uh, role of motherhood. Um, mm -hmm. Meanwhile, wh what what is it that Mark does at that moment? I don't remember. I think maybe it just I think cuts. He, I think he calls, or like Heinrich calls him. Um, they yeah. argue a little bit, and I think um, like Heinrich is like, uh, I'm bleeding at, at a bar, and uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like Mark, funnily enough, says, you know, "Well, just keep bleeding, and I'll be there in an hour." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because Heinrich had come to to that apartment that has the squid baby thing, and he sees this ghastly looking thing uh sitting in the corner no longer on the bed and it just turns up and it has these it has this very flat face like a i, I don't remember if it was a mouth or two nostrils or what and then offset eyes that are i think they were blue i didn't uh, know what i was looking at it just looked so bizarre like a, like yeah. a demon of some sort yeah, it looked like a demon. It was very disturbing. I, I was eating at that time. Very rarely do I get disgusted, but I was like, I, I looking at it, like, I actually feel disgusted. I can't eat right now. <laughs> it was disgusting. And then Helen comes over, um, gladly watches Bob finish his bath. I'm bleeding. Oh, well, maybe I'll come after you're done bleeding. Uh, and then has sex with Mark. Or at least has her tits out for a um, like a minute of the movie, uh, and then I think they sleep together. Um, He's also having sex with Margie, I think. It seemed like that. She was very flirtatious. Margie, by the way, is Anna's best friend, mm -hmm. uh, who seems to keep secrets for Anna, uh, but also doesn't know anything about what Anna's been doing because Anna keeps a woman keeps the secrets of her own keeps her own secrets, I mean. Um, but she she seems to want Mark to suffer, but is very hands-on and flirtatious with him. Uh, like, very um, sexually provocative towards him. Then Mark meets Heinrich next, 
at a bar remember? yeah at a bar and heinrich is like she's crazy we have to help her why didn't you go to the police we have to help her she's crazy <laughs> uh heinrich is you know going on about how he loves the world and she's crazy we have to help her we have to do something um and if it wasn't clear already mark's derangement is evident here because he bashes uh heinrich's head in yeah I, the... yeah i think mark also sees the weird thing and i think he's like yeah yeah yeah. he went to visit and he's like we have to we have to silence everyone who knows because he wants he he wants uh to hide anna's secret as well yeah he he wants to keep a secret he believes in it or or whatever uh he also saw the he saw the thing i guess and he also s opened the refrigerator and saw the decaying um body parts of the people that anna has killed to protect this thing and yeah then he's talking to heinrich and he's just gloat like not gloating but like taunting heinrich with the way that he wants to protect this thing when heinrich is like obviously an idiot not going to the police and going to mark mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that was his first mistake among many um but then of course um yeah mark has is just taunting him and then eventually bashes his head in what the top of a toilet lid bowl thing bowl lid toilet bowl lid uh or the toilet tank anyway doesn't matter uh and then he seems to try to frame it like a a bizarre accident he gives him a swirly basically puts marks uh not marks puts uh heinrich's head into the toilet flushes it and then his blood and water comes rushing out and keeps flowing sprinkles drugs neck all around him oh yeah 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 uh which I'm confused where he got that, but he's a spy, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then... Uh, like a short while later, um, Anna kills Margie? Yeah, well, she like slits her throat and she's trying to escape into the elevator. And uh, not not even a short while later, like a one cut later. <laughs> um, oh, if we didn't say it already, Mark beat Anna at some point earlier. Oh yeah, that was that was earlier in the movie, and like like she's bleeding from the nose and just walks away, and yeah, like we're supposed that it's like a harrowing scene, um, mm -hmm. kind of showing how Mark is not as innocent as he, he might claim to be. Yeah, um, he he definitely acts innocent, but he beats the piss out of her this also uh is where one of the other very popular scenes from the movie uh probably the two best shot shots um like right before he beats her the the camera changes and the lens changes too i think and we just get some portraits of of mark like looking at anna and sort of shocked and then he says something to her and anna kind of smiles but does it very slowly and she like does this kind of thing i don't, I don't know if you remember that face but, yeah yeah uh, it's it's, it's I mean, weird yeah i'm not as beautiful but as as the actress but um but she does this thing like she does it very slowly <laughs> uh but it's a very good um you know shot and and the way that she acts it out to show that like uh this this woman has it, if it wasn't clear already uh she has gone crazy <laughs> there's there's another thing where when he's beating her uh like he's like this is for all your lies and she looks at him and says then you'll have to add much more which amazing line um yeah way to be yeah. defiant to your your abusive husband and then she just walks away um <laughs> which i think is cool yeah yeah definitely uh an element of defiance possibly also the truth who knows or to be honest it, it might not be like the truth of yeah there's tons of lies but just uh cut stemming from the guilt she feels of the of the miscarriage she had as well uh and the the way that this has totally shifted her her life and and ruined her right so yeah, uh, Anna. At the, I think at that point, like Mark goes back to the 
the building. Um, mm-hmm. And then, uh, like, he sees Anna having sex with this tentacle monster creature thing. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> And I think it's just like, even though he's... Oh, well, that's later. That's later. He okay. burns the building down. No, I don't think that... Well, that I, okay. I think that happens at the same time or something like that. Yeah, he... Well, she has sex with the thing anyway. Let's well, get that out of there. Oh, well, you like he again? He's covering up her evidence, uh, covering up mm-hmm. the evidence of what she did. But also, like, I, I think the her having sex with this this tentacle thing is interesting because Mark is doing all of this to sort of protect Anna, to sort of be mm-hmm. the loving, the loving guy in her life. And in the end, she's still choosing like other people, other things, this, this horrible monster beast thing. Um, mm. And well, I think Mark had burned down the building. And when he got outside, there was a, just a random woman on the street that was like, yeah, <laughs> Which maybe says something, like maybe people knew that th- something weird was going on there. I don't know. Or that woman was also just like, let's burn it all down. Hell yeah. Who knows? Uh, I don't know if there was, you know, some metaphor for, for that character. But it was very funny to me that she was just some random woman. We don't even see her face. And she's just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not a lot of stable people in, in East and West yeah. Berlin. No. Uh, but then, yeah, then Mark goes home, uh, sees Anna. They have, se- they have sex on the kitchen. Uh, she leaves, and, and then Mark eventually finds her having sex with the tentacle thing, which is uh, he basically has the appropriate response, which is like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck am I looking at right now? Uh, he talks to Heinrich's mother who he had planned on killing again for an unex- inexplicable reason. To cover I don't up know all the she- evidence. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. she knows Heinrich died. It's not like she knows that it was him who did it, but <laughs> just to get rid of her. Um, and he's explaining to her, I know what Heinrich saw, but I can't tell you where he saw it or what he saw. And I thought about killing you. And then she kills herself. <laughs> okay. Because yeah. she didn't want to live anymore, I guess, like without Heinrich. Her life had, was moot. She was old. Her son was also middle-aged. Nothing to live for, I guess. So that was like a the worst casualty of the movie, I guess. Well, the, yeah, well, Mark ruins everyone's lives, but again, like, uh, to a mother, like, the most important thing should be the son. Um, for this, mm-hmm. and when when the son's gone, like, this woman has nothing to live for. Um, I yeah, think it's the a one... commentary on, on, you know, motherhood. Like, a lot of this yeah. is a commentary on motherhood. Yeah, well, she certainly contrasts with um, Anna on that point, because, again, as we said before, she doesn't give a fuck about Bob. Fuck Bob. <laughs> at all points uh anna just ignores her son like there's a couple times where i guess she helps him take a bath at one point before helen does like very early on in the movie um or she comes to watch him take a bath when when mark tells her come observe him or something like that he uses a very strange verb there uh or not emulate uh <laughs> Ad- oh yeah, come admire him. Very weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, detached from reality. Very much so. Um, at this point, I think the handlers have been following Bob. They seem to know everything that's going on. Not Bob. Uh, Mark seem to know everything that's going on with Mark. Yeah, leads to some confusion. Like, how do they know so much? Who is watching Mark? <laughs> well, there's, I guess they are. Yeah, the people. There are people near the wall who are watching Mark, uh, and I, I don't. Yeah, think yeah, that, yeah. That might not actually be happening. I don't. I think Mark's just a businessman, but he, uh, like, because he lives in Germany, he. I think he believes in his mind that he's a spy, and so like he sees mm. people like watching him on, on the wall, um, not really doing anything on the other side of the wall if i remember right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah people on the other side of the wall and 
actually, uh, I'm forgetting now. Were they even looking at him? I thought they... They were looking at him through binoculars, I think. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. For some reason, I thought they were... Like, one time I remember them having binoculars, but I could have sworn one time they were just talking to each other. But uh, anyway, yeah, he he does see these things. Very questionable whether or not that is actually happening. Uh, Not pressing F for respect, I'm pressing F for doubt. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, this just leads to sort of the end game of the movie, where Mark begins fighting a bunch of people. He forces a taxi driver to drive into um, a police car, and then all these cars explode for some reason. And then um, he He gets into a gunfight. Yeah, he gets to escape his handlers. Yeah, and he he runs off, uh, and he finds Anna at like a, a staircase sort of building. Uh, and when he when he goes to the top, uh, Anna introduces him to New Mark, uh, who is like a doppelganger of uh, of Mark. Um, her maybe... child, her son, is now complete. Her son lover is now complete. <laughs> <laughs> Makes, this this part made no sense to me, and like. Mark is uh, like astonished and um, <laughs> like he like before they have a chance to react the people the, well, I mean, he pulls out the gun he's about to kill he's about to kill his other self and then the police come blasting yeah and then like Anna and the old Mark die uh, and new Mark Man. is free to to just um, destroy. Yeah. Any part of the world that that he well, did. Anna shoots herself in the spine with old Mark's gun. Very and, unusual and, way of doing that. Yeah, and the thing about the new Mark is that like she's always worried about other people finding out, right? Because she's very possessive, and she knows she can trust that thing to always be by her side, which Mark cannot be trusted. Uh, which you know, maybe maybe you're right that he is a businessman. He does. Uh, yeah, wear suits early on and, and this kind of thing. He's got briefcases, which I guess the spy could also have, right? But he's always, he goes to offices uh, to meet his handlers. Um, he seems to have a pretty domestic life in general, nothing to, he never actually does any spy things in the sense of like, he's not working during the movie, right? Yeah. Uh, but he, he doesn't ever seem to act like a spy or know how to tail somebody. Like, why would he need to hire a private investigator if he's a spy? Uh, so probably you're right. Maybe he is just a businessman. Um, he's deluded uh, himself into thinking he's deluded. something more. Yeah, and he's deluded himself. And maybe, like, well, definitely he cheats in the movie. But maybe he has his own level of guilt and a lot of his reactions to things are from his guilt. Like he's not around because he's, he's cheating on her and she knows it. Uh, and that led her to cheating on him. I just have this thought. I don't know if that is actually something, but um, I don't know. Like, or he's like, he's away on business trips, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got to go to, East Germany, or I've got to go to France or England or something um, for a business trip. And she knows what's really going on. We've seen him philandering with possibly Margie, uh, definitely Helen. Um, He doesn't seem to have like spy skills that he could apply to this mystery going on in his life. Mm -hmm. So maybe he is just a domestic guy who is warped by guilt and his he's never around his wife is even more warped by guilt for more feminine motherly reasons right. uh the you know he's not around she had an abortion or not an abortion sorry uh a miscarriage you know so on and so forth and like they're just not good with each other in the first place and uh, anyway she shoots herself in the back and like crawls up to him and like dies in his arms and old mark jumps off of the staircase as the police and handlers 
um, are coming up the stairs. New Mark goes away, goes to a very nice house where Bob is being cared for by Helen. Knocking on the door, Bob is saying, don't open it, don't open it, don't open it. Yeah, he, he goes and he runs upstairs and he kills himself in the bathtub, which is awful. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> Helen is going to go open it and he just, don't open it, don't open it, don't open it. For some reason, the bath is already made, mm -hmm. <laughs> which, okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then he just lays in there and it stays on him for quite a while. So that kid could really hold his breath. Well done to him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I hope he made it out okay. But <laughs> he did not. I do not think he did. <laughs> but then, like, as this is happening, you start hearing, like, basically war noises. Like I so what I think is happening here uh, is I think those are nuclear sirens given the setting of yeah. the Cold War Cold War Germany. Uh, Helen, it just it just it sort of focuses on Helen as her eyes grow wide, um, mm. and so what I think and th th this is where I'll kind of explain some of what I think this movie is doing. I think it's talking about how in inconsistent environments, uh, people mm. tend to go crazy. Um, mm. for, for Anna, like the inconsistency of Mark and the, uh, obviously the, the miscarriage, uh, that, mm. you know, that, that weighs heavily on her mind. And so she begins to lose it over the co course of the, uh, of the movie. Um, and then, um, like you pair that with what's going on in, in the world at the time this was made, uh, mm. with the, with the Cold War still happening mm. and the threat of nuclear war. Uh, if you were living during this mm. time, you wouldn't like you, it wouldn't be easy. There'd be a lot of stress for you. And so I think that's really what's going on to the people in this story. And then you pair that with like the theme of motherhood and it, there's a lot of pressure placed on women. Um, uh, especially uh now i don't really understand what's going on with the ending with like new mark showing up and um like maybe potentially he's gonna kill these two people to have yeah the doppelgangers like are meeting almost she doesn't open the door but he's moving in a really weird way and we have to remember helen is a real person who just happens to be a doppelganger uh and look just like like um Anna, uh, Mark is a manifestation of guilt and trauma <laughs> in the form of a squid person that is the son and lover of Anna <laughs> and possibly is killing that fucker, his older brother, Bob. Uh, good job. Well done. Mission accomplished. Uh, hands clean because he didn't have to do it himself. Bob did it for him. <laughs> yeah, I like that idea that it, maybe it's like nuclear, a nuclear siren. Uh, I didn't think about that. It did sound like wartime noises. Uh, certainly, I think it was like, um, to me, it was like, okay, a relationship is falling apart. Um, and I think it was, yeah, also because you, you, you see the wall. I, I think it was the Berlin Wall, mm -hmm. uh, but you see the wall, at least a wall, constantly in the movie. Uh, it had to be the Berlin Wall in my mind, but uh, uh, yeah, you see the wall, uh, and I think it's you know also trying to say like this division, which we certainly see between the two characters, this division or this inconsistent, this uncertainty in the world or this uncertainty in the relationship uh, makes things fall apart. Uh, very easily, very quickly, and is dangerous for people. Uh, this kind of division of the city itself, and this Cold War, and etc. Uh, so, I don't know. I, I think everything about the movie was really thematically sound and and consistent in a way, while also being absolutely batshit insane. <laughs> No, I agree with that. Uh, like, it makes sense at times, but other times it just, it, um, like, even if I try to, like, look at it and examine it, it just, it, it uh, Zulawski, like, his, 
the story is just too baffling like mm. to to really fully comprehend I, I do think it's something that needs like two or three watches to fully make sense of uh, yeah. but i also think like anytime you watch this like it, you're gonna pick up on something new that you didn't see before um yeah so, um, yeah, uh, very fascinating movie ending kind of weird, but ultimately I, I really love this. Like I absolutely adore this movie because of mm -hmm. all the, the overacting, like it, it is definitely my thing. You said that like, um, it would, it, you have to have a taste for it. And I do, um, I, I love Sam Neill's sort of like bizarre behavior throughout this entire He's movie. He's very manic mm -hmm. and at I, at all times. I, I uh, like I kind of guess that he would like um, he, that he's capable of that because I, he kind of acts this way in Event Horizon, uh, mm. but um, he he was also in Jurassic Park, so I don't think a lot of people really saw you know that side of him. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's that. that I, I I just really love this movie. Yeah, I'm not as big of a fan just because of the overacting, and sometimes it's just too confusing and I, actually I, I think if it was like it, it's not too long i mean it's like two hours and five minutes but i think if it was 10 15 minutes shorter it would be perfect uh there's just a few parts in the first hour and maybe like a, one, some parts uh in the second hour that could be shortened a little bit and then i think it would be or just cut out completely um possibly I don't know what you would cut exactly, but uh, certainly there's no, <laughs> there's not a lot to cut out because so much is already just cutting immediately to the next action. But um, yeah, I didn't really care for the overacting, but you couldn't, re if this was played seriously and done with like serious dramatic acting, it wouldn't be as effective, I think. And it, it just wouldn't work. So I don't know. I, I like it a lot. I like what it's doing and I like some of the scenes and just the absolute bonkersness of it. Uh, but eh, some of the acting, but I would watch it again. Maybe not a third time, but I would watch it again mm -hmm. with, with some friends not that haven't seen it like by myself, maybe with friends who haven't seen it. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> just absolutely baffling those people yeah. um, so the question that you usually ask at this point and I, I i have a hard time thinking any of us will relate to anyone but who do you relate to the most here lucas bob i think i wanted to be done with it by the end <laughs> he um, took the right way yeah, um, I, I think Bob's the only normal person here, besides yeah. maybe Helen. But I don't really relate to anyone in this movie. Everyone is is like acting very strangely. But like when everyone is overacting into such a great degree, that mm. becomes like a, a norm for the movie. And mm. you're, I think you're able to sort of get more involved in that world. Whereas if it's just like one person, like William Shatner, just eating the scenery, it's kind of noticeable. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Maybe if I had to pick one more seriously, I mean, I can't really relate to anyone. Bob is the only normal one and did the appropriate thing in a mad world. Just end it. But um, <laughs> uh, maybe Heinrich. I just not for anything that I really relate to. It's just like I want to be that kind of guy. <laughs> he's so vibrant and weird like when he comes to meet sam at his house and he's just like dancing around <laughs> i love that i don't know why i don't know why he does that it doesn't it defies logic but i relate to him in the sense that i want to be that guy even though he's a weirdo <laughs> okay yeah it's a pretty solid movie in my opinion though um so yeah, we, we've come to the, um, end of this video. Uh, but as per usual, you know, there's, a uh, it's, it's my turn to, to pick the movie for next mm -hmm. month. Uh, mm -hmm. and, um, so something interesting that, that is happening right now is that, uh, my university and my union are in, in the process of doing contract negotiation 
but mm-hmm. the uh, the um, university has not made fair deals. So the we uh, the union ha- uh, is is in the process of going on strike, but they're doing it like um, at different like sort of campuses mine hasn't been Mm. called on to strike yet but i might be and so i figured you know why not talk about a movie that is um about unions uh and uh more so than that let's talk about a movie that also had james earl jones Uh, i only found out about this movie after james earl jones died and it's apparently well regarded so we're going to be talking about madawan about a um a a union strike and that uh, was particularly violent um that was either based on a true story or it was sort of like um based on actual events but kind of fictionalized so um i'll send you the details on that but that's what we'll be watching for november sounds good Mm -hmm. and yeah so we've we've come to the end of this video um if you have anything to say about um you know possession if you think it makes a lot more sense than we think it does or if you just hated it let us know in the comments below we would love to hear from you otherwise don't forget to like share and subscribe so that more people can find out about this movie the people who made it or you know um you know just uh join the discord uh also um subscribe to uh lucas's uh youtube channel if you haven't done so already um they he's making uh, pretty quality videos uh and then um until then we wish you the best of luck in your weird and uh socially inconsistent travels farewell farewell